Hey guys, Dr. Yu here. Today we're going to look at properties of solutions. Um, so you can see that in T7, there are a lot of uh, new wording, but old content, such as describe the polarity of water and its influence on water as a solvent. Even though it's old content, I think it's pretty important. So we're going to go over that real quick. And also osmosis and diffusion. Now this topic has been discussed in my T6 video. I would suggest that you watch that T6 video on osmosis and diffusion. It's also a very important topic for anatomy and physiology, right? So if you're taking an anatomy course, um, that video is probably going to help you understand the topic and um, be prepared for uh, just your regular college course. There are two new topics distinguish between solvents and solutes. Oh, we're going to talk about that. And explain concentration and the dilution of solutions. So this is also uh, a little bit uh, complicated because it involves concentration. There might be a little bit of math that you need to do. We will also um, go over this in detail. Now, first, just kind of recap of water properties. Um, water. H2O has this very interesting molecular structure. And I like to say that it looks like a Mickey Mouse. So that's the head of the Mickey Mouse with the two years. And the head is oxygen atom. And the two years are two hydrogen atoms. And remember that when you look at water molecule as a whole, the oxygen end is negative. And then the, the uh, hydrogen end is positive. And that's why water is a polar molecule, right? It has two opposite ends um, that have different charge, right? One is negative, one is positive. So other molecules that are polar, uh, meaning they also have a positive and a negative end, um, these molecules would like water and they dissolve in water. They're water soluble. Polar molecules like each other, right? So that's why water is a universal solvent because you know the polar molecules can dissolve in water pretty easily. The second property is cohesion. So this refers to um, the property where water molecules stick to each other very well due to the attraction. Now, what kind of attraction? If I draw another water molecule, oxygen, and then the two years, hydrogen. This is a positive end, and this is a negative end. And you know the different charges attract, right? The positive and negative end, they attract. These two water molecules uh, are attracted to each other, right? So they like to be close to each other. There's that little kind of force that hold them together. So that's what cohesion is about. And if you look at the photo on the right, if you put something that's not too heavy, right? Something light and not too heavy on the water surface, you can see that the water can really hold the weight of this paper clip, right? It doesn't sink. It floats on the water surface. And that's because these water molecules have this attraction force, right? It's almost like uh, we're all holding hands. We can hold something very heavy if we're all together, holding hands and forming a structure that can withstand the weight. So that's kind of what water molecules are doing, right? Water molecules can actually hold something with a little bit of weight, uh, and that object is not going to sink. It's going to float on the surface. Now, this attraction, which is the attraction here, right, between the positive end and the negative end, uh, and that's also known as a hydrogen bond. So this hydrogen bond is actually kind of hard to break. Um, it requires a lot of energy to break the hydrogen bond. And that's the reason why water has high specific heat. So you need a lot of heat, right, to heat up water. And I'm sure you have this experience, right? If you boil water in a metal pot, the metal will get hot very quickly, right? But it takes longer for water to get hot and um, starts boiling. So that's high specific heat. Another property for water is a high heat of vaporization. So that just means that it takes a lot of heat for water to vaporize, right? To um, turn from liquid to gas. 
And this is also because um, the attraction between water molecules, that hydrogen bond that holds water molecules together. So you need to provide a lot of heat, right, to break that bond. And then the water molecules can get, can get away from each other, right, and become that gas state. Okay, the next one I want to mention is adhesion. Adhesion is the attraction between this similar substances. I know it's uh, just fancy wording. Basically, it just means different substances. And normally, we are looking at water and something else. So for instance, if we look at water and the glass, right? Water molecules like to stick to glass. And that's why when you measure something in a glass graduated cylinder, you probably will see meniscus, right? There is um, the water surface it is not flat, right? There is concave um, there. And that's because water molecules stick to the glass um, and it kind of climbs up a little bit. Okay. So that's adhesion. So this is just a quick overview on water properties, uh, especially the, the polarity of water. Okay. Now we're gonna look at solvent and a solute. So when we look at a solution, for example, sugar solution, salt solution, there are two parts to it. There is a solvent, which is the greater proportion of the solution. Now for teas, um, I think it's pretty safe to say that the solvent is probably going to be water. I doubt that teas would be tricky enough to use something that's not water as the solvent for a particular solution. So you can safely assume that for a solution that you see on teas, the solvent, the larger portion of the solution is going to be water. And then you are going to dissolve something in water, right? And that something that you dissolve in water is known as the solute. So water is the solvent, and whatever you dissolve in water is solute. So here's um, an example. If we're talking about sugar water, then in this solution, water is the solvent and sugar is the solute. Now, how about a saline solution? And that's 0.9% sodium chloride. Which one is the solvent? Right, water is pretty much always the solvent. Um, solute is sodium chloride, right? That's why I have this information here. So we dissolve sodium chloride in water and 0.9%, that's the concentration. That's a, a common saline solution that we use in medical practices. All right, now the formation of a solution, right? When you dissolve something in water, it's a physical process. There is no chemical reaction involved. So water is, a, is still water, sodium chloride is still sodium chloride, right? The, the two substances are not gonna change. There's no chemical reaction, um, it's just a physical process. Now, there is a relationship between solubility how easy, how much a substance can dissolve in water, and temperature. Normally, if we're looking at a liquid or a solid, the solubility will increase at higher temperature. And that's because at higher temperature, you increase that kinetic energy, right? So molecules move a lot more than when you have a lower temperature. So the water molecules um, move more, right? And more likely uh, come into contact with the solute, right? Whatever liquid or solid you have. Water molecules can pull on those um, solute molecules. That makes more solute molecules dissolve in water, right? Because water is kind of interacting with those solute molecules, pulling them into the water. But when you look at gases, that's the opposite, okay? So for gas molecules, the solubility is inversely proportional to temperature. The solubility decreases when you increase the temperature. And that's because at higher temperature, again, you increase that kinetic energy, right? But instead of being pulled into the water, gases, when they're more active, right, when the gas molecules are more active, they move a lot more, they move a lot further. 
So they would just come out of the water, right? And then uh, move into the air. So when you increase temperature, this actually uh, makes more gas molecules escape the water into the air. So gas solubility decreases at higher temperature. Let's look at a couple of terms because this has been mentioned in the study manual. A solution can be hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Things that are polar or carry charge, uh, like ions. These things are hydrophilic, right? Ions, sugar, salt, um, they're polar, they're hydrophilic, they dissolve in water very easily. On the other hand, some molecules are hydrophobic. I think we have probably touched on these terms before, but just real quick, hydro means water. I didn't mention that previously. Phobic means hate, dislike, right? Philic, that means love. Hydrophilic basically means water loving. And the hydrophobic just means the substances don't like water because these substances, these materials are nonpolar. Usually uh, hydrophobic or nonpolar molecules have a lot of carbon hydrogen bond. For example, it should be oil, not definitely not soil, fat, um, some vitamins like a vitamin D and some hormones like sex hormones. Those are big molecules with, with a lot of carbon hydrogen bond. So they do not uh, dissolve in water very easily. They're hydrophobic.